Sunday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern here on BeyondRingside.com. Join us for the Midnight Black Mass. Myself, the Reverend Dan Wilson, brings you the dark gospel of professional wrestling. Uncensored, unedited, uncut, and not for the faint of heart. You can find out more about us at YouTube.com slash PottyHumor or subscribe at PottyHumor on iTunes and Stitcher today. Forget all you know about podcasts. We welcome you to an experience uniquely different. Please join us for our coverage of all entertainment on the fringe of society. The candles are lit. The lights are dying. It is now time to welcome our host. As he steps up to the pulpit, the the sacrifice has been prepared prepared for the midnight 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 black black mass. 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 Ghastly greetings, groovy ghoulies, and how the hell are you? It is I, the maniacal minister of the cult, the devil you know, the Reverend Dan the Dragon Wilson, here for another edition of the Midnight Black Mass. Andrew Alexander is out on field assignment tonight, but he will return next week. But joining me is our third co-host, now uh, second co-host for this episode, the strong style psycho tank, my dude. How goes it? What's going on? Alexander is not on any kind of goddamn field assignment. He's at home listening to Florence and the Machine. <laughs> that faggot. <laughs> Tanks, um, PC all the way. You're on the midnight they black mass. Have, they must <laughs> have had a damn Florence and the Machine DVD release, and he went and bought that shit. <laughs> <laughs> or Kelly Clarkson. So you know, whatever, whatever floats his boat. Yeah, well, we did kind of have to drag him to the dark side in the the days where he was a member of the Devil's Reject. He was he was not a uh, he, he he had some strange kids <laughs> as far as as entertainment. But uh, he'll be back next week to give his rebuttal to these accusations. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, I uh, had a had a great weekend on the road in Cornelia, Georgia, at the Landmark Arena at uh, Why We Wrestle, and uh, things are picking up steam there. Another up house. It was uh, 140, which was an increase uh, it's, uh, three in a row on the upward. So that's always a good sign. Uh, and uh, the action was hot and heavy. Things went crazy. Your boy Iceberg lost his mind. Uh, Jacob Ashworth pinned him with a Dusty Rhodes style cross body off the top, probably picking up the biggest win of that guy's career uh, on route to his big hardcore hell made event against Gunnar Miller. But, uh, you know, Gunnar and Iceberg and Bailey all promised that Jacob wasn't going to make it to Hardcore Hell, and uh, they might have delivered on it because after the huge victory, of course, everyone's elated. See Jacob uh, pick up a big win over the Iceberg. Very few people have pinned his shoulders to the mat there. And uh, what happens when Gunnar comes charging from the back like Nikita Koloff from Super Brawl 91 uh, with a fucking belt? and clocks Jacob in the head, and then Eisenberg butchers him with the implement of destruction, and Bailey gets on him, and then Gunner piled around Jacob on the chair. And then Danny Owen, Linda Matchmaker, comes out, and he's uh, getting in Bailey's face, telling him, you know, oh, he's threatening to fire him, and Jeff, you know, kind of called his bluff there and said, go ahead, you're not going to fire three of the top draws. And uh, he said, dude, he got heated, and they insulted each other back and forth for a minute. And then uh, Danny finally said, you know what? I, uh, as a matchmaker, I'm not allowed to put my hands on the talent. So I resign. And then he punched Bailey in the face. And, well, you know how that ended, because the iceberg got a hold of him. <laughs> and uh, Dan, uh, 
Gunner got a hold of him, and even Bailey got up and got some, and uh, it was a bloody mess. The locker room tried to save them. The referees, security, they all got massacred. Um, so big question marks going into February 25th because the elite raised some immortal hell. And it sounds like it. It sounds like Danny should have kept his damn nose out of the out of Bailey's business. You know, and he's the matchmaker and he needs to keep his ass in the back and make the matches. True. Well, he was the matchmaker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, that's just what happened. You know how crazy Iceberg gets, man. Once he's on a roll, there ain't no stopping him. There's been many times, hell, I've I've tried and it just don't work. And he's, he's crazy as hell. And Jacob, yeah, sure. uh, you know, hopefully he'll he'll be all right and can make it a hardcore hell. We know he's uh, following up with physicians this week, going to get that neck checked out. And uh, he will be in attendance on February 25th to let everybody know what his status is going to be. Uh, so... That's a <laughs> crazy development. And then uh, coming back on February 25th, we're going to have a Kings of the Hill match. Uh, and I'm not talking about Hank Dale, Gribble, and Boomhauer, or Bill Dutrieve even. I'm talking about tag team number one contendership. Uh, it's going to be a tag team Royal Rumble style match where both members of the team have to be eliminated. And uh, teams already entered the Lynch Mob, Team Tag, The Approved, Brad Cash and Seven, Odinson and Gladiator Jeremiah. Uh, got a lot of uh, great teams lined up to try to get that next shot at the Tag Team Champions, the Monarchy. So that's going to be exciting. Also, uh, whomever the new matchmaker is going to be uh, will be announced on February 25th, or we're going to have at least some word about it. And uh, they've already signed Gunnar Miller against Death Wish Brad Cash, who's uh, another guy you're pretty familiar with. You kind of, uh, you kind of was your young boy for a time and protege who you spawned onto the wrestling world. Oh yeah, uh, he he's picking up business for himself. You know, he, he's gonna have a have a rough night with Gunnar Miller. He, you know, Gunnar's no joke. I went down the one night. To, he was on his little tear, and uh, I thought I could hang with him, and he gave me the CTE, and, and damn, I haven't been the same since. I know, and people see that move, and they're like, oh, it's just a football tackle. Uh, this guy was a top collegiate prospect. Uh, probably could have gone to the NFL had he not wanted to pursue his dreams of being a professional wrestler. That was more important to him. Uh, but, you know, this is a guy who hit people on the field – every single weekend uh, in a top position. You know, he was a top linebacker, a top defensive player. So we say, oh, it's, it's so much more than a tackle because you've never been hit by a guy coming that fast with that much precision and skill uh, doing what he's doing. So uh, it's, it's basically like getting hit by a train. Oh, yeah, most definitely. He, I mean, hell, he damn near knocked me out of my boots. I almost, I almost retired then. So fuck this. <laughs> it was one of those nights where you might have had to check your drawers. I did check my drawers a couple times. <laughs> so uh, Gunner and Brad Cash getting tangled up. Also, the Deadly Sin Seven going to go one on one with a wild Billy Buck, and uh, the first ever women's tag team match. And the Landmark Arena will be seeing. Uh, Dementia De Rose and Tragedy Ann taking on uh, Crystal Rose and Rock and Roll Rock C. So it's going to be a great night of action there on the 25th. Also, uh, don't forget, just while we're doing some housekeeping notes about the <laughs> church slash landmark arena, uh, a little bit about the name change. The church, it will always be a, a nickname beholden by the fans there, and people always love that. But for business reasons, uh, we decided to rename it the Landmark Arena. Uh, which uh, just, you know, in the Bible Belt, people were a little sensitive about the word church. So, you know, there were some people that were a little bit offended by that. So, you know, I can see that. From the business perspective, you want to appeal to as many people who will buy your tickets as possible. So the Landmark Arena, a uh, big reason behind that. There's a new Facebook page uh, that kind of focuses on the history of the arena. 
go there, facebook.com slash famous landmark arena. And uh, also coming up on Friday night, starting March the 3rd, each and every Friday night, the future stars of Why We Wrestle will be appearing at the relaunched NCW. Uh, it's basically uh, the rebranding and relaunching of the old Wild Side Friday Night Family Night program. It was a developmental program for many years that turned out a lot of top stars in the Wild Side and Anarchy Days. And uh, so look forward to reinstating that and uh, having great action each and every week at a low price. Maybe you can't afford to come to the, the big event. So these, this is a family night show, $5 for everybody. Uh, come on in, uh, bring your friends. It'll be a good time. And then, uh, you know, get a, get an early glimpse at some of the guys you might see uh, main eventing the main main roster cards. And then also later down the road, you know, in, in bigger events like WrestleMania, for example, uh, like many uh, guys who have came through the Landmark Arena will be doing. Oh yeah, most definitely the uh, the Landmark Arena, the church, you know, whatever you want to call it. That that Friday night show, I mean, I hell, that was the way. That was the only way you could get into Wild Side. You had to do the Friday night shows. Luckily for me, I just had to do do one of them, and that was enough to get me a spot with Wild Side. And uh, you know, a lot of tons of guys that come through the Friday night shows who have been successful. You know, Seth Delay, Sauronaro. Uh, Jimmy Rave, uh, Todd Sexton, uh, uh, or it, when he was with that tag team TNT, I mean, just so many guys. And I don't know who who he who who's running that's got lined up, but you know if they just stick to their guns and listen, then they'll they'll be on the Wobby Wrestle shows and get booked all all over the the state, all over the country. I mean, that's a hell of a launching pad right there in Cornelia, Georgia. Absolutely. And, you know, getting Rick Michaels back on board in the office, um, talk a little bit behind the scenes stuff. I don't like to reveal a lot of that, but that's what you people want to hear nowadays, isn't it? Um, <laughs> you know, let's just say we're just, we're working as hard as we can for you people to try to reinstate the glory of that place. And the, the buzz is coming back. Um, I've been getting inquiries from top talent from all over the place wanting to come back in, and they know the deal. Like, without divulging too much, you know, it's never been a place where guys get rich. The overhead in the arena is high. We're a developmental operation, so it's never been a place where guys come to get a quick payday and then hustle out of town. Uh, I think that mindset tried to change in the early days of why we wrestle, and it ultimately was a giant failure. And so, you know, it, it was a matter of getting the buzz back, of getting it to be a, a, the place that you, worthy of the prestige and lineage of the building where talent wants to be there. And we're relaunching the television product. Uh, we've got a new editor on board who's one of the best I've ever worked with. And that's saying something because I've worked with a lot of great editors, including Andrew Thomas, who's now the one of the head editors for TNA. Um, so, you know, it, it's... It's just like we're trying our damnedest, and it's a lot of work and a, a very little reward at times. Uh, but, you know, we're trying to get this place back to where it needs to be. And uh, the relaunching of the TV is part of that. And also uh, we're going to do some DVD releases of each event is the plan. Really keeping my fingers crossed before I uh, stick my foot in my mouth here. But that's the plan so far is we're going to do a 30-minute YouTube recap show that kind of recaps uh, the happenings and shows some interviews and clips and highlights. Um, but, you know, kind of still want to go with that old Southern philosophy. don't want to give everything away for free. So uh, we're going to be making DVDs of each individual event. But that's not all, because we know that DVDs are, you know, the wrestling world might be stuck 20 years in the past, but a lot of wrestling fans are not. They're in the present. They want to be able to get it via technology. And so we are reaching out to various uh, streaming content providers, including one Powerbomb TV, among others, uh, that you know may be willing to, to carry the event so that you have access to them if you don't have the ability to come see them, but you're still essentially paying a ticket. You're paying a ticket to watch it just from the comfort of your own home, on your mobile device, etc. So that that's my goal for 2017, is to get the, the media into things up and running. Uh, we got the promotional end popping now. Um, we got people coming back in the building. Uh, we're opening up income streams, merchandising, and just trying. And it's it's the most professionally ran the building has been in years, and I'm very excited. 
Oh man, all that sounds great. Especially the if you could get on one of the on one of the the, the streaming services because that seems to be the way to go now. It's like you know a lot of I mean I I haven't bought a DVD in years since like the the WWE Network and then you got the High Spots Network, the Powerbomb TV, pretty much any big promotion. They they got their own streaming service, Combat Zone, uh, AAW, Progress in England, uh, ICW in England. Uh, and it seems like, I mean, hell, it's like on demand. You can watch the shit whenever you want to. You know, maybe they'll be into the I pay per view. I don't know in that that part of Georgia if you can get service to actually do that. But that'd be nice. I mean, there's a lot of companies are are, are going with I pay per views, and uh, it sounds sounds like everything's going. Is going for for the better down there. I mean, I when I left Anarchy, you know, I vowed I'd never go back, and I came back to one time. And I'm not who to say I won't ever come back, but you know, it was I'd seen it go through two or three different owners, and it was just kind of dropping off. And I'm glad to see what you guys are doing, bringing it back up to where uh, Cornelia Wrestling should be. I appreciate it, man. Like I said, a lot, a lot of top talents reached out, to, you know, that knows what the deal is, know what we're about, and still want to come in and participate. So really excited about what we got coming up for you in 2017. And uh, just stay tuned. Uh, Facebook.com slash Famous Landmark Arena. Facebook.com slash This Is Why We Wrestle. Uh, at Why Do You Wrestle on Twitter. At This Is Why We Wrestle on Instagram. Um Lots of, and, and not to mention all this, of course, we got the 19th annual Hardcore Hell coming up on March the 25th. Can you believe there's been 19 of those? It's one of the longest, if not the longest running independent wrestling super card in United States history. Um, that's a big deal. But then coming up on September 9th, it's signed, sealed, delivered, rescheduled. Everything is in order. Now the Wild Side Reunion is happening, 9-9-17 at the church or landmark arena uh, and over 40 confirmed NWA Wildside stars will be making their return for one night only. You don't want to miss that either. Oh yeah, that's going to be great. I'll be retired by then, but I, I will still be there in some uh, way, shape or form, you know, uh, might just run in and close on somebody or something, you know, who knows, but I will be in the building that night. I'm, I'm really excited about this. There's a lot of guys who I haven't seen since the Wild Side days. You know, when Wild Side shut down, you know, they they said the hell with it. My dumb ass kept going. And it's just, uh, I'd be really excited to see some of those guys. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I don't know who all is, is coming because I am not involved in the creative process on that. I'm handling, I'm the head over all the Why We Wrestle creative stuff. And, uh, you know, also now taking over this new TV production department. But uh, I have no involvement in the Wild Side creative end other than, of course, it ain't going to be Wild Side without <laughs> Daniel Dragon Wilson and Stephen Prez that call the action. So we're going to be back there in the announce booth and in the ring announcer spot, uh, you know, doing the classic thing that everybody there wants to see me do. But I don't have any involvement in the booking, so I don't have any idea, like, who else confirmed. I know that there's a lot of awesome surprises lined up, and um, like I hope the guys from Texas come. Like I haven't seen a lot of those guys in a while, like Rudy or Hot Stuff or uh, uh, Masada. Of course, we saw him back at Hardcore Hill last year. But uh, the Texas Treats, Fast Eddie, dude, I haven't seen that guy in years. I haven't heard hide their hair of that guy in years. You remember that fucker? Oh yeah, he he did. Uh, he was the guy who was blind as a fucking bat. They could work his ass off, though. Yeah, he that was one of the fucking, damnedest uh, things. <laughs> yeah, but he 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 couldn't see shit, and he was one of he hit what he was doing the the body slam moonsault gimmick. I was like, holy shit, this guy's awesome. And then the yeah, Texas he was Street, Chris Marvel and Chris Marvel and Don Juan. I still chat with Chris Marvel from time to time via Facebook Messenger. He's got a wrestling school with Masada in Texas. So I'm always, I'm kind of hopping that shit up whenever you know, guys want to learn how to wrestle. And uh, hell, go to San Antonio and learn from Chris Marvel and Masada. Yeah, that's the uh, the hybrid school of wrestling. If you're in the yeah. Texas area, 
uh, you know, be on the lookout for, for those guys if you're looking for somebody to train you. I'm going to tell you they're going to whip your ass, but it'll be for the better. Uh, it, <laughs> it will be to make you better in the ring and as a human being. It uh, never hurts to get a little dose of that humble pie. I think a lot of us uh, miss that from time to time. We we all need a little dose of that humble pie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, you know, when I train, I have my ass whipped. But, yeah, it, it, I, was, I was taught how to fight, you know, how to fucking shoot, and then I was taught how to work. <laughs> because before I started wrestling, I was a big giner. I didn't do nothing. Yeah, it was toughing me up, you know, more than anything. You know, if you can't handle it, you know, get the hell out. But, you know, if you think you want to be a wrestler, get a hold of Chris Marvel, Masada. Hybrid School of Wrestling. And uh, I believe it's out of San Antonio, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, there's all kinds of wrestling schools here in the South also. So, Oh, yeah, a lot of great spots around right now. Um, there's no, no sense in going to a nickel and dime school uh, that's going to rip you off. You know, if you can't ask, like, five people that uh, of some repute and they know don't know who they are, then, you know, you might be getting shysted. Um there's plenty there, of course, not to harp on the Landmark Arena, but there is training there, uh, courtesy oh, of yeah. Gladiator Jeremiah and uh, the, the former Devil's Reject, Azrael, who's uh, pretty much on the shelf now due to a knee injury. But um, <clears throat> he's still working there in the, the facility training the future stars. So you got two of the best guys that ever came through that building. Uh, Joey Mercury and Doc Gallows, or Luke Gallows, have just started a... Uh, a school down in the Barnesville, Georgia area. And, you know, that's a wealth of knowledge there, especially from Joey Mercury. Um, you know, Gallows is uh, obviously a busy guy right now on TV. Uh, so I'm <laughs> sure he probably doesn't put in as much time as as Joey does. And But Joey, you know, he's been working in the office for years, so that's a great spot to go train. Um, there's just, just ask around and make sure you're going to a reputable place and don't get ripped off. Yeah, I mean, as far as in, in in Georgia, I mean, I think Joey Mercury would probably be the uh, the the best way to go right now, as far as you know, learning how to work promos. Because hell, he's done it all. Hell, he's I don't know if he still works for Vince, but you know, he was a uh, uh, an agent for uh, for a long ass time after his in ring career. And hell, there were times where he would uh, with him and Jamie Noble, they were both agents. And they were doing spots on TV, and hell, they still look better than half the roster that was that was out there then. You know, these are, Joey Joey Mercury's awesome. Yeah, yeah a great chill dude too. I've worked with him several times in the in the Wild Side days, and and he was always really cool, and professional, and uh, always helpful, and you know, willing to, to offer some advice. <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, check those guys out. Um, so let's let's hit some some wrestling news. The elimination chamber was last night. Um, I didn't get to catch all of it, but I did catch the main chamber match and uh, maybe you know a couple of the undercard spots. What did you think? I uh, I just watched the, the chamber match. I thought, like I told you earlier, that's that's like one of my one of my favorite matches next to the Royal Rumble because it's kind of reminds me of the old War Games days without the blood. And I thought this one was really good. I I, was, I liked that Bray Wyatt won the title. The only thing in the match that I didn't like, and I, and I, I, I was going to bitch about it, was Barry Corbin went on a tear and was whipping everybody's ass. He was the freshest guy in the match and got pinned by the shittiest schoolboy I've ever fucking seen in my life. Other than that, <laughs> I thought the match was great. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it too. I, I found it. It was, uh, you know, they didn't pull out any, like, super insane stunts, which is probably for the better, uh, you know, condition people to not expect that every time so we don't have to needlessly get crippled. Uh, and, yeah, it was an exciting match, and, you know, why it's been a guy they've kind of been waiting to pull the trigger on for a while, and he's kind of seemed to have the, the old stop, start, stop, start. So, so, you know, now's his time to run with the ball. Uh, one thing I do wish that I, I would never hear again and as an announcer, you know, especially getting really seriously back into the foray of this thing, uh, where I've just mainly done like guest appearances over the last few years, 
it's like, you know, really back to studying the announcing craft again. And uh, we really got to lay off of so much damn hyperbole. We're really killing our own shit by overselling i mean you know, like part it's, it's it's a second nature part of the job at some level like you you gotta be a little hyperbolic but uh i think we just kill things like we just say oh the era of why it has begun well like to me that implies you know the era of like it's going to be like hogan you know where the whole company's built yeah. and merchandised around him and it's like you know he could lose that belt by wrestlemania you know it's it, it's not a guarantee and it's just like there's a stock line that they say every time somebody wins the belt. Oh, the era of so-and-so has begun. Well, is it really their era? Does that really fucking mean shit anymore for you to say that? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. I mean, as far as like, you know, you're you're the announcing guy, so I don't really catch into that shit that much. I just, uh, I do know some of those guys that SmackDown has got, what, four announcers? That's kind of overkill. And he just put Mauro Ronaldo and and JBL together and let that be it. Cause I, I'm not a big fan of Otunga either. It's like he just chimes in from time to time. Like they'll be talking and that some bitch will just chime in with something fucking stupid. I'm like, who the hell is that? Oh yeah, it's Otunga. And yeah, I'm, I'm not sure guy, why they no they feel like they need four. Because <laughs> it's mainly Ronaldo and JBL. And then the other two, they just chime in from time to time. So I don't know. I, I do like Ronaldo, though. I mean, I, I've been listening to him for you know a few years. He used to do a lot of the Strike Force MMA shows on CBS and Showtime, and he's he, he's really friggin' good. I mean, he was doing the New Japan on Axis TV when he left. Jim Ross took his spot. But he, uh, yeah, I, I I do like the way that he does his. Uh, as a commentating. Yeah, I dig him as well. Um, he's he's like one of the first real wrestling announcers they've hired in many years. You know, usually it's they'll hire somebody from either a wrestler that couldn't hack it now or <laughs> or got hurt, yeah. you know, not to insult him, but uh, or, or, you know, they'll hire somebody from ESPN or somebody that has news experience or whatever, you know. And so you don't really get that wholehearted and when I talk about hyperbole like the Mauro and all the guy that does it right I mean he puts the hard sell on some shit you know but but he doesn't oversell it like like to the point that just nothing means anything like I it's been a laughable uh that Josh Matthews is claiming you know he's the greatest play-by-play announcer in the business apparently there's a big controversy on that and him and Jerry Jerry Borash got in a big Twitter war back and forth over uh, who is the best play-by-play announcer. And it's just like, man, that's something that other people have to say about you. You can't say that shit about yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you have to fucking, you have to, I mean, even if you, even if you want to say it, like you have to preface it with, well, people have told me that blah, 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 blah. You know, like not, I'm the best fucking, well, all right then. Uh, but clearly, you understand your spot if you're out here feuding with a motherfucker on Twitter over who's more over when an announcer's <laughs> job is to get other people over, you fucking marks. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, no shit. Thank you. I hadn't heard nothing about that, but that, that does sound pretty fucking ridiculous. That's like me just coming out saying, I'm the best goddamn wrestler in the world. You don't believe me, just ask me. <laughs> and like, oh, okay. And I mean, because, like, like Josh Matthews is a decent announcer, you know? I, I'm not paying. Like, he's real bad on the hyperbole, uh, you know, to where a lot of his grandiose claims don't really mean shit. But uh, but he's not bad. I mean, clearly he's not bad. He wouldn't be given a lead spot at a major company. But yeah. if you say, I'm the best in the world, like, I don't know. It's just fucking stupid. Like, why would you do that? Because it shortchanges what you do bring to the table that's good. It it's, it just makes you look like an asshole, no matter how you fucking slice it. And if you're trying to be a heel play-by-play announcer, well, I mean, I guess there's a first time for everything. You know, hey, man, step outside the box, right? The rules, yeah. break the rules. I mean, if you can fucking make it mean something and make money, then I'm all for it. But 
I just don't see it. Sorry. Yeah. Like you said, quit, quit being a fucking mark. You know, it's okay to be a mark. Just don't be a mark for yourself. Those are the, those are always the worst. You know, I I see shit on Facebook all the time about everybody putting their putting their their goddamn matches over like it was the best match on the show. I'm like, so this weekend, there's like 40 guys on my fucking timeline that are the best fucking wrestlers in the world, you know? I'm like, give me a break with that shit. Yeah, man. Like, nobody gives a fuck proud. Up. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I had, a, I, had a, I had a pretty good match tonight. Okay. Fucking just shut up and fucking go and do your goddamn job. Quit putting yourself over. That, that's what I'm trying to say. We're putting yourself over. Uh, yeah, it, it's. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Well, I I can get into that a little bit, you know. Just Dan, don't. What may I? Yeah, go ahead. Um, thank if I may. There is there are people in this industry that. As you gain experience, most of us with an IQ above dried wallpaper paste learn <laughs> the penchant and learn the talent of putting the match that you were in over, getting people to watch that match. Therefore, they will agree with you and say, good match. The big problem that we have in this day and age, aside from the sense of entitlement and the fact that McDonald's sucks, is the fact that people confuse the term getting over with putting themselves over. They feel yeah. that if they put themselves over enough, they'll get over. No, no, no. You have to get over with them long before you ever try to put yourself over. Agree or disagree? Oh, yeah, exactly. Sorry about that, Dan. That's what I always... Oh, hell, man, just chime in whenever. <laughs> Yeah, by all means. That's our producer, Fast Eddie Lane. I'm sure you're familiar with him if you listen to this station at all, because he's all over it. Uh, but he's also the, uh, the the Andrew Alexander replacement momentarily for tonight. <laughs> uh, and, and we appreciate his help here on the show, as always. But, yeah, like, the, the whole just, just like... If I start trying to, it's hard to some of these guys to suck my own dick, I'd fall off the couch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> dial it back a little. It's okay to be proud. It's okay to be proud of your accomplishments, but you know, fuck. Like, I if, mean, as long as you as, could, as long as we've been friends and like and social media has been around on Facebook and Twitter, how many goddamn times have you seen me say, "Oh, I had to match the night tonight"? I don't ever say shit about my matches. If people like them. They'll send me a message. Hey, you had a you had a good match. And that's all you're gonna see from my dumb ass. I'm not gonna be in there saying, Well, I you know, I worked so and so to a thirty five minute Broadway. And fuck off of that shit. Go to hell. Go take some more goddamn pictures, you faggot. <laughs> I mean <laughs> Tank, you you <laughs> You get in trouble with the F C C that word's not cool anymore for public consumption. Oh, all right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, we have replaced it with Fruity Bastards. <laughs> fruity Bastards. I will, I have to, I'll have to remember that. <laughs> fruity <laughs> Bastards. <fucking> Got him! <laughs> well, like, I apologize like, if, I, if I have offended any, anyone. I'm sorry. And it, it's okay. And I, I think a lot of like what you're talking about before is just like like with me, it's I guess maybe the metal attitude, like coming from the rock and roll world, where it's just like fucking, I, I don't need to lick my own balls because if it was good enough, other people will be licking them for me. And if they're not licking them for me, then it must not have been any fucking good. Or maybe it just served the purpose it needed to serve on the card because not every match is fucking about you. Uh, as a booker, I lay out cards. Like a television show, like a drama, like you would, you know, they have an ebb and flow. The matches tell a story all the way through. And so, you know, sometimes that's, there's a point where things need to be crazier. Sometimes they need to be more uh, laid back. Uh, sometimes you got to get that heat. Sometimes you don't. So, you know, it's not always your job to go have the match of the night. Oh, no. Yeah, that's what, 
you know, well, I've tried to explain to some guys, you know, know your, know your, your, your placement on the card. If you're in the first match, unless you're just out there to get, you know, the, the crowd, like, you know, Alexander, we talked about this two weeks ago. They had me and, me and, uh, Rockwell. We were like in a, in a feud. We, we opened the show and then everybody had to build off that. On, on your normal shows, your opening match is just to be kind of like, yeah, yeah, you know, these couple guys, you know, a spot, and let's see what they can do. Not, you know, 104 false finishes. You know, if you're on a, on a pre-show match, you know, don't go out there and do, you know, 48 moonsaults and nine corkscrews over the top row. Just do your basic match. Somebody wins, somebody lose. And I promise you, you guys are watching, man. You're like, and, and probably way more important guys than me and my associates that are also bookers that communicate with me on the down low on a regular basis. Um, you know, uh, there, there's a network of bookers and promoters out there that keep an eye on the behavior <laughs> that goes on on social media. So, like, you know, perhaps you might want to not do things like uh, quit a promotion and then trash them or, you know, run off at the mouth about how you weren't used right and blah, blah, blah. Because if I see that shit, you know what I think? I think, eh, well, that guy doesn't like what I want to give him, then he's probably going to quit and go fucking run off at the mouth about how he wasn't treated fairly and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I just ain't got fucking time for that when I got a line of guys out the door who are skilled professionals willing to travel from all over uh, who won't give me that kind of flight. You know, just just mind your P's and Q's on social media. Putting yourself over, uh, bitching about other shows. Uh, just, just the way you... Because I've, I've definitely seen a few guys that I was totally planning on booking and the shit they posted on social media just turned me off. And I was like, eh, you know what? You already seem like you're going to be more trouble than your fucking work. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm notorious. If you see my Facebook post, I call people shit birds and stuff. I mean, you know, the 99% of that shit was all fucking fun and games and joking, but a lot of people got butt hurt over that shit. And there was other promoters that hit me up who I'd hurt their feelings by. They thought I was talking about their show. I'm like, no. You know, if, if I really have a problem with somebody, I will contact you directly. <laughs> And we'll just go from there, you know. Yeah, there were so many guys. I, I don't even want to get into that shit. Too many uh, fruity bastards out there. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. Really think I'm a shit bird? I don't think it. I know it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, half the shit I posted was was about me. So you know, people they, they get mad as hell. Speaking of shit birds, let me go on this one little rant. I actually got blocked. From a from one promotion because I was making fun of Dump Sanders and uh, calling him Goat Dick. So whenever you hear me say the word Goat Dick, I'm talking about Dump Sanders. So <laughs> okay, we'll just get off that subject too. Oh, Tank. <laughs> <laughs> hey, brother, I got six more months to go. I don't give a shit. You know. <laughs> I know you're the greatest. You're the greatest co-host ever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what, what was the latest? Uh, of course, talking about rock and roll going in, but Teddy Long going into the Hall of Fame. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, he deserves it. He, uh, I remember seeing him like wrestling in, in the old NWA shows at the Omni years and years. First, he would, he would work. Uh, he would like like take the ring jackets back and stuff, and then he started wrestling, and then you know he became the manager of uh, Doom. And countless other guys in WCW that went to WWE as a referee and then uh the holla 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 gimmick or whatever. I mean, yeah, he deserves it. He's been in a long ass time. He's put in his time and uh I believe he 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 deserves to go in. That's just my I've only met him met him a couple of times. He's always a fucking stand up guy and cool to the boys and he and like when he's working the smaller shows, you can tell he has fun being there. Yeah, he's a guy who loves the business for sure. 
Uh, just, just absolutely love the business, and it absolutely deserved. I think so too. Uh, the <laughs> motherfucking Chattanooga Choo Choo is going on there in the background. Yeah, God damn it! I'm outside again. Fucking train's going by. <laughs> but uh, you know, Taylor Long is a guy who's been a utility player, and as a guy who's one of the great hangers on of professional wrestling, who was not skilled enough to be an in-ring wrestler. Found any fucking way I could to be a part of this shit because I love it. And Teddy Long did the same. Uh, you know, he raft, he managed, he's general managed, he's promoted shows, uh, and he's probably done way more than that. I'm sure he's worked in the ring crew and a bunch of other shit. So, um, yeah, props to the Godfather and holla at you, player. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Fuck yeah. So, uh, Hall of Fame uh, is running uh, out. What? I was going to say, uh, when we talk about, like, movies, I know you said you saw Lego Batman. You can give us a little re- review of that. Oh, sure. Shit, Jeff. We can, we can veer it off the wrestling track. I think I've covered all the wrestling topics I wanted to for the moment anyway. I'm sure it's... Everything yeah, relates to wrestling, wrestling in life. Yeah, yeah, the more I talk about wrestling, the more pissed off I get. So, yeah, let's, let's talk about movies. <laughs> wrestling relates to everything in life at some level, so I'm sure we'll circle back around. But, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I saw the Lego Batman movie. I uh, went on a date with my uh, five-year-old daughter to go see the Lego Batman movie, and I was the hero of the day. Uh, we went to IHOP for a nice breakfast where she got a funny face pancake, which she thought was the coolest shit ever. And uh, <laughs> then we <laughs> we went and saw Lego Batman, and it was one of the greatest Batman-related things ever done. I mean, it, it's I'm not trying to say it's not a Lego movie, because it's definitely a fucking Lego movie. All-star cast, by the way. A uh, bunch of A-listers and just top-notch comedians <laughs> all throughout the thing. Uh, but it, it touched on every incarnation and era and iteration of Batman from the beginning in the forties all the way to now, including the Superman versus Batman movie. Um, it was just hilarious. Like it, it nailed Batman and, and like all of the inside Batman jokes that people in the Batman fan community make about Batman being a spoiled rich alpha asshole. Uh, like, it, it was so warmly self-depreciating. Like, it, and you know, it, the whole thing is about, like, Batman is, he's a dick because he's, he misses his family and he doesn't want to let anybody else in. And, of course, you know, you meet Robin and Batgirl and Commissioner Gordon and Alfred and and shit. So you know, it, it's definitely a kids movie with a, with a lot of great nerd humor, like so many inside jokes, like it, it, every fucking Batman villain you could imagine, down to Crazy Quilt makes an appearance. <laughs> um, and th- there's a bit of a spoiler alert, but I have to talk about it because it was the coolest shit ever. So the Joker gets banished to the fucking Phantom Zone. <laughs> And so to bust out of the Phantom Zone, he goes and recruits all of history's greatest villains. And so they're not DC villains. It's like Voldemort and the Gremlins and King Kong. (laughs) 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 And the fucking Daleks from Doctor Who. (laughs) They all fucking come down and they have to fight Batman. And it's so fucking awesome. (laughs) That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I'll... I'm not a big fan of the whole Lego stuff, but the way you just put that over, I might have to take my my youngin to go see it. Hell, I'll probably go see it by myself. I'm cool like that. Oh, I'd watch it again well, in a heartbeat. Yeah, you went. You did the whole family thing. Me and me and the wife, we went uh, the fifty darker shades of gray, whatever the hell it's called. It was sold out, so we ended up seeing John Wick too. And if you saw the first one. This one is not as good as the first one, but he kills a lot of people. So if, if violence and guns are your thing, you will definitely love this movie. It's not a revenge flick like the first one was, but it shows that he's a pretty tough bitch, and he likes to kill people. 
Actually, he just kills people that tries to kill him. You know, he's not just going out just randomly killing people. He, if you try to kill him, he's going to get you. So I, I gave it a thumbs up just for the violence itself. I know a lot of people are upset. All these gun toting, you know, the, I was reading some articles and how disgusted they were by this movie. I'm like, yeah, get a life. You know, it's, it's, it's entertainment. That shit's going on in real life too. So it ain't like, you know, it's, it ain't that bad, but shit. Just chill out and watch a damn movie. Yeah, that's cool. I, I thought I've seen the first John Wick, but everybody said it was awesome. I like a good action movie. I, they just usually go low <laughs> in the queue uh, to horror and wrestling shit and uh, comic shit. Yes. <laughs> and so, you know, but I, I definitely like a good action movie for sure. So I, I'll probably check that out. Um some good big year for movies coming up, so lots of exciting things. Um, going to be interesting to see what lives up to expectations and what doesn't. But uh, big year for Marvel, big year for DC. Almost, you feel like it's a make or break year for DC in the box office. Like if Justice League isn't good, I think really Justice League and Wonder Woman both have to be awesome. And if they're not, then DC is kind of in trouble. Are they both coming out this year? Yes. Okay, cool. I, I'm looking forward to Justice League. I'm looking forward to Wonder Woman. I mean, I'm more, you know, I, you know, I, I get a hold of Dan when I want to get my fix on comic book stuff on what the hell's going on. I don't read the comic. I do enjoy the movies. And I'll be like, hey, Dan, well, who's this character? Who the hell is this? And he always gives me the heads up and kind of keeps me informed. But I do, I mean, a lot of people shit on the Superman versus Batman. I loved it. I, I thought it was great. Uh and then with Wonder Woman, and then the Justice League coming out. And I'm really looking forward to Logan. You know, it comes out next month. I think, I guess I don't know much about the little girl, but according to the preview, she's a, she's a bad little shit. Well, she's a comic character from the X-Men from recent years. Uh, X-23 is who she is. She's a female clone of Wolverine. Uh, Laura Kinney is her name, and uh, an awesome character. Uh, I've always enjoyed her involvement in the X-verse in recent years, and uh, cool to see her finally getting a crossover to a movie. But fuck, man, everybody's getting a crossover to a movie now. It's not like the same that it it, it was a a crazy deal to see all these characters, and you're becoming a little more desensitized to it because it's like, oh, there's fucking Martian Manhunter every week on Supergirl. That's cool. Uh, yeah. you know? <laughs> but uh, still a very exciting time to be a comic fan I hope the bubble doesn't bust anytime soon uh, but I kind of feel after Infinity War they might be headed for that because that's kind of the crescendo of everything they've built so hopefully DC will catch fire um, Walking Dead is back on television uh, enjoyed the episode last night I loved the <laughs> The walker, uh, the, where they took out the herd with the two cars and the chain, fucking big oh, yeah, double was, clothesline. That was, awesome. <laughs> that was badass. Yeah, that was, you know, and then the, you know, the end where they get lured into the junkyard and that new group. So I don't know who the hell they are. Apparently, they're not in the comics. And Rick smiles at them, so he's probably thinking, well, we can get these people. You know, we can fight off the saviors. Uh. Yeah, that Walking Dead is not the only TV show that I really do keep up with. It's kind of hard with with my job and wrestling to just sit down and watch a lot of TV. Walking Dead, my DVR is full of different shows that I have yet to watch. And my wife keeps telling me to, to delete that shit, or she's going to, so I need to start binge watching some of this stuff. Yeah, that's uh, it, it, it's still a favorite, of course. So uh, while we're foraying into the horror side of things, uh, one interesting item of note is that motherfucking Chattanooga Choo Choo is back again. Uh, yeah, son of a bitch. <laughs> is Fangoria Magazine has announced they are finally shutting the doors after many years. Um, you know... As a kid growing up in the 80s, and I, I, I mean, the internet's so much more graphic and whatever, but I just can't see the kids of today having the same sort of uh, cultural effects felt 
by the magazine stands. Like, how important were the magazine stands through our childhood when you could see all of this cool shit? And Fangoria was right at the top of that list. I, every chance I got, I was over there flipping through trying to see all this gory shit, you know. Um, it, it, similar to the wrestling magazines, the blood and the gore drew me in. And uh, most magazines having a rough go of it. I just saw Playboy had announced, uh, you know, they made a big deal last year that they were removing nudity from the magazine. And uh, clearly that was a success because I saw tonight they announced that the titties are back. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, 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 taking nudity out of Playboy, that just that don't make any sense at all. But 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 talking about the newsstand, you know, like every time I went to the grocery store with my mom, we go to Pruitt's or Red Food Store. Uh, as soon as we got there, I made a beeline to the to the magazines and uh, the rest of the magazines, the Fangoria. And then when I got a little bit older, I always liked Circus Magazine, you know, the, the whole heavy metal magazines or Metal Edge or whatever. I would just sit there while while she shopped, and I would just thumb through magazines and then beg for her to buy them for me. Yeah, I, I think maybe the vastness of the Internet loses all of that because there's just so much shit. It's <laughs> like going on Netflix. Like, you know, you go to Blockbuster back in the day, peruse the aisles, you know, fight, and it was an experience. You know, you picked up that perfect movie that you wanted to watch that night. You took it home, and you sat down, and you paid attention to it. Well, now you're on Netflix. You want to sit down and watch something. You got 8 million fucking selections to choose from. So it's hard for anything to really catch your eye. Something's really good. Like, that's going to be a great cover art or something. I knew was already going to be on there that I was looking forward to for it to catch my eye. And so, uh, you know, all of this shit is probably on the Internet in greater uh, detail and uh, nastier, more gore than anything that we ever saw in the newsstands. But the vastness of it, you know, is it readily available to draw kids there? Like, you know, is it something yeah. you're going to just happen upon like you would when you're in the uh, kid in the grocery store? And that's, that's, I think, a thing that just, I hate it for these guys because it's, you're missing out on a lot of awesome culture. <laughs> oh, yeah, most, most definitely. Like, talking about the kids now. You know, I, my oldest daughter is 18. And I try to get her to watch, you know, uh, the Freddy movies, the Jason movies, the Michael Myers movies. And she's hung up on the paranormal activity bullshit and the rings and all that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like the hell with all that, you know, because that shit, I'll be honest, I, I don't like that shit because it seems like it could really happen more than goddamn Michael Myers chasing you around the block. Uh, I don't really, you know, the whole ghost thing, it really freaks me out. But I'm a I'm a slasher guy, you know. I, I'm more apt to believe fucking zombies are going to come get me <laughs> than anything else. And she's just like, ah, I like these paranormal movies. I'm like, well, you're missing out, kid. Because I let her watch the uh, Halloween Resurrection one night, and she was just like, this is stupid. I was like, you get the hell out of my house right now. <laughs> well, to be fair, Halloween Resurrection sucks donkey balls, but <laughs> but, it, but it was the only thing that was on, you know. I mean, it was, it well, was I mean, the shitty that. Halloween movie is better than most other horror movies, you know. But still, oh, yeah, uh, uh, that is the one where Michael Myers got his ass whipped by Buster Rhymes. <laughs> right, Buster Rhymes whooped that ass for him. <laughs> Speaking of Halloween, before we get off the air here, we're we're running short on time, but uh, if you follow the show for any length of time, you know that the Halloween franchise is my all-time favorite horror franchise, and so, uh, you know, I, of course, love the originals, Um, not a huge fan of Six (laughs) or Resurrection, but I think otherwise, they're all pretty great, and uh, then fucking... The Rob Zombie movie is the first one I loved. The second one was kind of garbage. I mean, it had some great moments, but it ultimately just fell apart. But, uh, so finally a new studio has picked up Halloween. Blumhouse has bought the rights to Halloween, and they are remaking a new movie with John Carpenter on as a producer and potentially doing the theme once more, doing a new theme. And it will be the return of Michael Myers uh, set in between Halloween 2 and 3. And it will be directed and written 
by Danny McBride. Kenny fucking Powers. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I what read, are your thoughts uh, on I, that? I read that uh, Saturday or Sunday, and I kind of popped for it. I, I didn't know the, 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 the timeline of the movie, but, you know, it's in between... I guess it'd be in between two and four, wouldn't it? Because three really had nothing to do with the uh, with Michael Myers. But no, yeah, three existed know. in a world outside of the movies. Like the Halloween movies were just movies in Halloween three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, I, you know, give it a shot. I I hope it's good. You know, like you were talking about the Rob Zombie, the first one was great. The second one, if they left the fucking white horse out, I think it, it would have been all right. Yeah, that whole dream sequence stuff just it it just shit all over everything. But Danny McBride, I don't know, man. What do you think? Apparently, he's a really big fan of the material and wants to make a really faithful Halloween movie. <laughs> so you know, as long as we don't have Kenny Powers as the main baby face, which I mean could be fucking awesome, but you yeah. know, you don't want to turn Halloween into a comedy. <laughs> you know, but yeah. but you know. He, as long as he's out of there playing one of his stock characters, I do think he's a brilliant guy. And I think that, uh, uh, you know, and I mean, like, okay, he shows up as a janitor for like five seconds. He's like, hey, you fucking kids, get the fuck out of here. And then he's like, steals their dope and starts smoking it. And then Michael Myers comes and kills him. Fine with that. You know, like, that kind yeah. of cameo would be perfect. But, you know, if he's going to be like driving the boat as one of the main characters and is trying to be all serious. Uh, or if he's trying to be too funny, I don't know. Like, it, we'll see. But I, I'm definitely open to it. It's Michael Myers, so I'm excited. I de- and I did see something today about Rob Zombie saying he's going to make another movie with the Firefly family. So I don't know he, how legit that is or not. If that was just one of those bullshit Facebook articles, I don't know. But it was some mild we'll clickbait. I mean, he said from time to time recently that, you know, the fan demand has been outrageous to bring that, them characters back. And, you know, he's got a script that he's done that, you know, he would love to do another movie that he's come up with. A, I guess it probably would take place, you know, somewhere in between the two movies. But um, that he's got a, a script that he wants to produce and that, but he doesn't own the characters, so Miramax would have to be willing to do something with them and thus far they haven't really wanted to but you know if the fan demand is enough money talks the bullshit walks and that you know they probably would be able to come to some sort of agreement exactly well I hope it works out I wouldn't mind seeing them crazy fuckers on the screen again yeah I would love it I would I would love it clearly clearly I'm a fan (laughs) oh yeah uh so that's going to do it for this week's edition of the program. Thanks for joining us, Tank. Tell them where you can see us, or tell them where you can see you coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I got a couple of off weeks on March 4th. I will be at Saudi Daisy High School for the Scenic City Rumble uh, for a chance to go to the Scenic City Invitational. Uh, March 11th, doing a show uh, for Scott Hensley in uh, Chattanooga. I think it's like the White Oak Baptist Annex Gymnasium. Uh, March 18th, I will be at uh, Southern Fried in Monroe, Georgia. I will be wrestling uh, Jeter again. They are our second time to tangle. March 25th is open. March or April 1st will be for uh, GPW. Uh, and that's all I got right now. I have some other dates lined up, but you know, I, I don't remember where I shit last, so I, I can't remember. They're all on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> follow tank on twitter at tank <laughs> underscore est 1996 to get up to date info on all of his recent appearances he might even let you friend him on facebook at warren hollander on facebook uh if you mind your p's and q's that's where you can really get tank going off the cuff he goes on uh some <laughs> tremendous facebook rants so it's he's well worth an ad uh, and uh, you can find me on Facebook at Ram Band of Dragon Wilson. It is a fan page, so click the like button. I'm also on there on a personal page, but I'm overloaded with friend requests. I've got like 300 some odd unanswered friend requests on that thing. So if I don't like know you personally, or um, you know, there's not some sort of business thing where somebody's told me, hey, this guy wants to add you, he wants to talk business, then you know, I'm probably not going to add you. But you can follow me on Twitter at Dragons Rejects. 
Uh, you can email me at dragonsrejects at gmail.com for booking information. Uh, still taking some managerial bookings here and there, but mainly focusing 2017 on announcing as Dan the Dragon Wilson. So uh, if you'd like me to bring what I do to your event, hit me up, and uh, I will bring my play-by-play skills to uh, help get your talent over. And uh, Fast Eddie Lane, you want to give him a quick goodbye and tell him where you're going to be. Sure, real quick, um, from this vantage point, at Beyond Ringside on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Beyond Ringside Live. We also have Facebook.com slash Beyond Ringside, but that page is overloaded. I've got so many friend requests that I can't respond to because we're at our max, so please drop over, like Beyond Ringside. It's Facebook.com slash Beyond Ringside Live. For me personally... Facebook.com slash Fast Eddie Lane. Also, Fast Eddie Lane on Twitter, Instagram, and possibly even Snapchat. But if I don't know you, I'm not adding you back. <laughs> so, <laughs> and for the record, those of you who follow me on Snapchat, you will see obnoxious things. You will see me goofing off. You will see things from Friday Night Karaoke at Buffalo Wild Wings. So if you have a problem with karaoke at Buffalo Wild Wings or karaoke in general, don't add me. Because I do it every Friday night. <laughs> So you can delete me on Thursday, you can put me back on Saturday, but Friday night we're going to have the best and the worst of everybody coming out to play at B-Dubs for Friday night karaoke, so get over it. Uh, <laughs> actually had a friend of mine come back and say, no more karaoke, it's like, unfollow me. And he's like, what? <laughs> I'm on Snapchat, Snapchat too at uh, Dragon's Rejects, but I don't check it very often. Um, and I play around with it sometimes, but it eats the fuck out of the battery on my phone. So it just kind of pisses me off when I use it. But, <laughs> but I'm on there from time to time. So if you want to add me, I'll, I'll probably add you. But, uh, all right. Well, that's what we're going to do it for this week. We'll be back next week on the program with Andrew Alexander returning and a whole lot more. Thanks for joining us. This is the Rams. Keep one foot in the gutter and one fist in the gold. We're out.